The Green Bay Packers. The one word that comes to mind with them is potential. Last year, Jordan Love, early on, the whole team really, in the first half of the season, did not look great. Second half, something clicked. They hit the ground running and enter the playoffs. They looked like one of the best teams in the league. They looked like they could have actually made a run to the Super Bowl. Dropped two interceptions for touchdowns. Could have been rain in general, causing Purdy to throw some bad passes. But could have met the Detroit Lions in the championship round. And if they played like they did on Thanksgiving, could have made their way to a Super Bowl in year one with Jordan Love. One thing's for sure is it was a very exciting season during an unexpected time. This was supposed to be a rebuild year for the Packers, and yet they kind of looked like, I mean, maybe it's a little too early to speak, they kind of looked like they pulled off like a 2017 Saints draft. I mean, that Saints draft was ridiculous. We'll see what happens with Green Bay's draft going forward, but this wide receiver group, very underrated. Uh, you know, obviously EA really underrates it, but Dontavian Wicks, one of the best players against press men last year. Uh, Romeo Dobbs obviously had a really good year. Aggressive catch monster. Christian Watson, very injury prone, but apparently his hamstring issue is no more. Apparently it's solved. And then Jaden Reed, a uh, very, very solid rookie season from him. And honestly, when it's all said and done, I mean, this is one of those really good wide receiver draft classes. Of course, Luke Musgrave and uh, Tucker Kraft, they looked pretty good for a while. Kind of off the field opposite times you know some injuries in there but uh you know a lot of potential there once again i mean there is so much potential with this team but which way is it going to go is jordan love the real deal i mean obviously he wants to be paid like it probably should be paid like it we see you know players do less and get more he's potentially even going to hold out from what i've heard but i don't know if that's actually going to happen he's at otas so that's a good sign but Jordan Love, if he played like he did in the second half of the season, he could be the real deal. I mean, you look at this team on paper in Madden, it's not the best. But offensive line, it's a top 10 offensive line. Maybe not very high in that top 10, like right at the cusp of being outside of the top 10. But Rasheed Walker, another really good offensive lineman in the second half of the season. Zach Tom had a great year. Elton Jenkins is, you know, kind of the anchor of this offensive line. And then Myers, I'm not a huge fan of him. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of him. Hope it works out for him. Hopefully, he, you know, turns it around. But Jordan Morgan, right guard. I know there's a lot of talks that it could be Zach Tom at center, Jordan Morgan at tackle, and then I I don't know if it's guess Josh Myers at right guard. Hopefully not Royce Newman. Uh, but I'm just going to play it how I would in Madden. I do not have Jordan Morgan as a star dev because he was projected, you know, a second rounder. I heard there was teams that were trading up late second trying to get him, but... You know, whatever the, that case may be, it kind of feels like Jordan Morgan was viewed as a second-round player. A lot of versatility. Green Bay was always going to draft. If we were going to go for a lineman, a versatile lineman, that's what they love. Obviously, the biggest thing in the offseason was Josh Jacobs joining this Packers team. Xavier McKinney as well, in fairness. But Josh Jacobs was the biggest ticket name. Obviously, very good in-game. Super young but did have a down year. Obviously, there were some injury problems. There was a Raiders team that wasn't really scaring anyone with their pass attack and a pretty iffy offensive line at best. I know Zamir White was better than him technically, but Josh Jacobs joined a team that actually can pass the ball and can still, you know, we find those run lanes even though they're not the best run-blocking team in the league. I think he's obviously going to have a resurgence, obviously, but um, the question about it is Madden. What's going to happen here in Madden? I mean, there's some low overalls. We're hoping that these guys can develop. If I can at least get Romeo Dobbs and Jaden Reed to be the future, that'd be great. Uh, but then we have to move on to the defensive side of the ball, a team that a lot of people thought maybe would have went corner. Cooper DeGene, they had multiple opportunities at and just passed it away, really, which I kind of get because Valentine, he looked pretty good. Keyshawn Nixon is super underrated. And then, of course, Stokes in his rookie year was really good. The problem is injuries. Even Jair, injuries, but... At the end of the day, this is the squad they went with. I know Javon Bullard could potentially play like slot corner, but I expect him to play strong safety. We talked about McKinney already had an amazing year for the Giants last year. Lucas Van Ness, it was about what everyone thought. He was going to be a raw player that rotated with, uh, you know, somewhat rotated with Preston Smith. And as far as a Madden concern goes, I've got to start Van Ness. He has a way higher ceiling and... I mean, that's really all there is to it. Way higher ceiling. Obviously, Edrin Cooper was another draft pick that they made. Uh, a lot of people thought was the best off-ball in the draft, which, if that's the case, who was very athletic. I mean, they kind of got another Quay Walker, really. I mean, just on the surface, kind of another Quay Walker there. 
Uh, of course, we just talked about Bullard. Uh, gave him star dev. A lot of people thought he was, you know, maybe the best safety in the draft class. Uh, which, I mean, I'm down with. Obviously, a bunch of safeties in general. Defensive line, Kenny Clark, up and down all the time. Uh, Carl Brooks had a really good year, and uh, he's kind of being underrated here. Still don't know about Devontae White. It was a better year, but still, uh, question marks obviously still abound. And then you look at offense uh, one more time. Marshawn Lloyd, Daniel Jeremiah had him as his best running back in the class. Maybe that's a... Excuse me? Uh, you know, this is, it's Vic's class, and, you know, I like the ratings quite a bit overall, but yeah, this is, I don't know if he mixed up the players, but Marshawn Lloyd's juke move is definitely a lot better than 64. That is going to be one of his, like, go-to moves, really. Uh, of course, not exactly like Aaron Jones, but kind of a similar player in Aaron Jones, a little, a little bit. I can see a lot of similarities between them. Uh, but ultimately, we talk about this Packers team once again. Potential. Potential. We'll see what happens here in this rebuild. But I expect this Green Bay Packers team to be competing once again for the playoffs. Maybe go a little bit further than the divisional round. It's going to be a tough one because this division definitely stepped it up. And uh, in general, once again, will we see the guys progress or regress but now that that yapping is over, uh, if let me know in the comment section below which team you'd like to see next. I had that poll, and there really wasn't any like front runners besides the Colts. Packers were definitely the highest second. Uh, maybe I just go down in order. But if you guys have a, a team suggestion and it has like a ton of likes, and everyone wants that, that'll be the next team. While you're down there, maybe leave a like if you end up enjoying the video and subscribing if you're new. We do a ton of franchise stuff here on the channel, and let's get into this rebuild. I promise the final Packers rebuild of Madden 24. Now, I do worry a little bit. I worry about the fact that I accelerated uh, Jordan Love's money ask, his contract years, to align with real life. Uh, the thing is, he's not asking for anything like crazy. He's definitely a 40 million per year type of guy at this point with the way the market is. So I'm willing to offer that. I mean, I think there's going to be the Jordan Love rebuild. So, 40 million per over six uh, years is actually a steal in this market. So I'm fine with uh, with paying that right now. Crazily enough, this Packers team did exactly what they did in real life. But only this time they had an extra win and it wasn't enough. 10 and 7 and we missed the playoffs. We had a really bad start in the first half of the season. And then we started winning a bunch of games and should have probably made the playoffs. Didn't change anything except for the defensive scheme, which was early on, uh, as this team is going to be running a 4-3, not a 3-4. So I switched all the players over and all that stuff. But yeah, that's kind of crazy that we miss a 10-7. and That's probably the worst record in a rebuild so far that we have missed the playoffs with. Jordan allowed 3,500 yards, 26 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. That is a good season, but not great. Uh, rushing, Josh Jacobs was unbelievable. Watson, 1,010 yards with 10 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, pretty decent. Jaden Reed, pretty bad. And then Musgrave, good touchdowns. Yards are a little low, but this is the Packers scheme. Offensive line, uh, not that bad. Jordan Morgan, is he going to go up to star dev in year one? What a freaking year. Edrin Cooper, four sacks, 126 tackles. Quay Walker, 105 tackles, one sack. Interception, six for Jair. Sacks in general, Rashawn Gary, nine. Kenny Clark with eight and a half. Lucas Van Ness at four and a half. Cooper, we talked about already. Greg Joseph, I don't know if he's actually going to win the starting job over Anders Carlson, but, you know, he was the highest overall. That's who I uh, that's who I stuck in there, I guess. Anders would be like a practice squad kicker or something like that. Join a new team, become like the GOAT kicker, and the rest is history. That's how that would work. Uh, Josh Jacobs, number eight. Defensive player of the uh, or defense yeah defensive player of the year I had a, a double take there I didn't expect it Cooper at eight uh, offensive rookie of the year at nine defensive rookie of the year at two that is really painful at least it was a legit rookie of the year Jordan Love at number five running back at number three best wide receiver not on the list O line at number two I'm sorry but I got to do it I got to put him at star there's a chance that he is star in general anyways because of course he is a first round player. But the fact that he was number two, he might not even need it. He might get the dev up on his own. But the fact that he was number two to uh, Zach Martin, he deserves a dev up. I'm sorry. He just does. The Ravens versus the Niners, a rematch of the Super Bowl from some years back. 
Who turned off the lights and the Niners win the Super Bowl? Let's take a look at any potential dev ups. Offensively, none. So we will be forcing Jordan Morgan. Really sucks that Musgrave didn't go up and dev. And then defensively, I don't think we had a dev up here either. Not a single dev up, which is unfortunate. Of course, some guys went up in overall, which is great, but no dev ups, not even Jordan Morgan, unfortunately. Resign, I'm pretty sure we took care of everyone we needed to. It's pretty much all like backups and special teamers, which most of the special teamers, not the best. We have your option for Stokes. I know they didn't accept that in real life, so we were technically you had to pay him this season. It is what it is. Bo Melton, you know, another high potential wide receiver who actually showed a little something, uh, but I just can't afford him. I simply can't. Uh, and then the punter, maybe. I mean, I think we could just replace all of these guys. There's a little bit of real life and a little bit of Madden mixed in. You know, in real life, you care about, you know, the long snapper. You know, you want to continue having the same long snapper as long as possible. So, they, you know, the timing is perfect. And, you know, you're used to that kind of thing. But in game, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, backup positions don't really matter too much. So I try to save money where I can and then replace players that I think you can realistically replace. Uh, free agency, obviously there's some names here. The Green Bay Packers are in, like, love with the idea that they're the youngest team in the league or whatever. So... I imagine they're going to want to try and keep that going. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens here, but I don't think we're going to need anyone. Uh, linebacker, perhaps, would be a, a nice addition, but sadly, it doesn't really seem like there's any like high potential linebackers. Who's this? Isaac's a free agent already. Okay, interesting. But yeah, honestly, looking at all the positions, there's really not a player that would really help us out uh, that I can really think of that would be worth the, the money here. Linebacker even, not the best overall, it's not the best ages. I can just replace someone hopefully in the draft. So I think it's going to be all draft. So we're in the draft. The Giants have the first pick overall, and Keon Coffey is looking very interesting. The problem is he's a top five guy. We have pick 18. Could go Grubbs as well. He's uh, six foot four. Don't really necessarily absolutely need the cornerback spot, but, you know, Stokes, I don't know if the ceiling's really the best to be reached. He might be better as like a number three. We'll see what happens, though. We're going to go to pick 18, and I'm either going to be taking a defensive tackle type, or if one of the corners looks good that is there, that's the route I'm going to go. Uh, cornerback, Grubbs is still there. What about that DN that I really liked? His name was Andrews. I do like Andrews quite a bit. Don't know the power move. It might be a C, but uh, pretty athletic. Bench is okay. Tackle's great. Block shed's great. Is that enough? I don't know. B awareness. I think it's enough. Sean Andrews. Hidden up. There you go. DT1. Well, two technically because of Ken Clark. Then we're going to go to the next round. Uh, maybe I should have slow sim to have a chance to trade up for Grubbs, but I, maybe I do just give one more chance to uh, to what's his name. I might just give another chance to uh, Stokes to maybe be the number one guy. I don't know what I want in the next round. There's some linebackers. We definitely could use one. There was all two to threes, actually. So, yeah, I mean, realistically, I might have to take a, line, uh, a linebacker here at 18 in the second round, which seems like, you know, a little a little high for my liking, but at the same time, there's no linebackers that are any further than that, so if we want a linebacker, we might have to go now. I really don't know how to go with Gaffney. You know, he's got some pretty good ratings, but a D in block shed, pretty athletic. I feel like the middle linebackers, the true middle linebackers are the guys that have the highest chance at hitting, though. Van Bur Buren, Buren, I don't really know who I want here. Van Buren is the fastest. Usually the speediest guy is the guy that is hidden. Then you have Cook, who is the uh, youngest of the bunch. Very athletic. This is a tough decision, because in theory, I could also just trade down and get some more value. But I think I'm going to go with Sterling Van Buren. Buren, Buren. And he's hidden dead. That's a win. That is that is the linebacker position solved it's settled we're we're fine and i forgot my offensive line are gone too this is kind of crazy i almost want to trade up for spikes just to get some value to you know a depth position but this was a really bad draft and i'm surprised we even landed what we did i don't need any of these players like i do i just trade this third round pick for you know like a i don't think i get a second next year but something decent maybe i can trade like the third and the fourth this year to get a second next year I think that would be probably fair. I mean, you can see a lot of teams are offering me a three and a four. So you would think they'd give up a second for the three and the four we have. Because like I said, I really don't need anything else. I wanted alignment. Didn't get it. And I, I couldn't get it. And the Bengals do take it a third and a fourth this for their second next year. 
A little bit of a risk because obviously they could suck, but they are a likely playoff bound team. And they trade up for a corner, which they are in desperate need of. And the only player I have left is Mike Kelly, uh, 6'3", 22 years old. Decently fast, even the left side says he isn't. I'll take him. It's the fifth round. Oh, and he's hidden! It is not common that we grab gem corners that are, like, way outside. You know, third round, maybe. But the fifth round, we landed a hidden 6'3 corner. That is a win. Still disappointed about the fact that we didn't get a new uh, offensive lineman, but... You can't win them all. Draft recap, what kind of overalls do we land? 73-74, corner was 69, random wide receiver, random kicker. Uh, the kicker did have 95 kick power, though, so he might be in the running for starter. Sean Andrews in the running for starter, as he's going to be DT2. Power move, not very good, so definitely a C there. But the block shed 79, so you know Green Bay trying to get better at stop of the run. Kind of do with Andrews at DT2. Uh, star dev, didn't mean to rhyme. But, uh, I think, you know, can't stop me. Once I start, you can't stop me. Van Buren, not the best in coverage, but uh, everything else actually looks really good, and he's athletic. Is it right out? Left, left, right? I, I accidentally just entered a GTA cheat code, but uh, playing him at right outside linebacker. Uh, and then Kelly, I would imagine star dev Mike Kelly. Uh, good press man corner with uh, just enough speed at six foot three. Take a look at his dev. I'd be shocked if it's higher than star, which it is not, you know. Pretty expected. And then the kicker, J.C. Hutton, you know. 80, oh, 80 accuracy, actually. Okay, fair enough. Maybe the starter if he's the best. Season 2 team, we haven't changed a soul on the offensive side of the ball, which I definitely would have loved to get a new center, maybe future-proof the left tackle position, but I'm okay with it because a lot of the guys are still insanely young. But the defensive side of the ball, we have added a new DT2, a brand-new outside linebacker, and... That's kind of it. Obviously, didn't have that much uh, resources used in the draft, and free agency wasn't great. And in general, the draft, really, there wasn't much going on there either. It's a pretty weak class, but ultimately, we filled some of the biggest positional needs. And going forward, it's really just, can the wide receivers develop and maybe add another lineman or two? The rookie linebacker gets one of two for his camp standout, which is 10k XP. Resign time, $48 million. Kenny Clark would love to try and keep him. Stokes... 80 overall. We'll see those ratings. Uh, Morgan, I think, deserves a couple more years. I don't know why. I put him on a four- or five-year deal. Uh, Myers definitely is gone. Keyshawn Nixon, in real life, I would like to keep him, but I don't know if I can do that here in the game. We'll see what kind of money we're left with. If we win, we could sneak into the playoffs, which we do not. We lose. We're eight and nine. Things have not really gone super well so far. I don't know if it's because the wide receivers are still kind of a low, and o uh, low overall Went with the Falcons playbook as the Packers one was looking terrible. It was a slight improvement, but it was still far from where we'd expect or want to be. Uh, ironically enough, the Lions and the Packers are on the bottom of the division when you would argue that they are the top of this division in reality. Jordan Love, very real life numbers for him though. Rushing, Josh Jacobs was great again. Receiving, I mean, I can't say it called, you know bad because it was just a, a group effort, which is another you know real life kind of thing for this Packers team blocking uh you know Jordan Morgan's having himself a pretty damn good start to his career oh offensive line wasn't bad in general uh looking at the pass rush Gary was great everyone else was basically useless Van Buren could go to superstar Jair another really good season Hutton the rookie could win rookie of the year for or, or kicker of the year anyways that'd be kind of crazy to win a rookie of the year as a kicker but uh MVP goes to Caleb Williams of the Bears any award wins for us? Offensive Rookie of the Year? Obviously not. Defensive Rookie of the Year? Sterling Van Buren? Not a surprise at all. Quarterback at 7, running back at 3, wide receiver definitely not on the list. Offensive line at number 6 and 7. 6 isn't really super legit. Uh, Rashawn Gary at 5, linebacker not on the top 10. DB at number 2, and then kicker at number 2 to Fairbairn, the Bears kicker. Oh, no. Of all the teams to steal the kicker of the year. Probably doesn't really matter too much, but hey, it was a great year, and that's really the main thing that matters. Very disappointed, though, that we did not make the playoffs again. Cowboys win the Super Bowl over the Bengals, so that second-round pick really didn't turn out to be super great. Uh, looking at the uh, offense, it does not appear we had any dev-ups again, unfortunately. Defensively, hopefully Van Buren at least, which, yes, he does dev up, and no other dev ups. Just Van Buren. That was it, unfortunately. But we are progressing for the most part, so I can't really hate it. 
Just, uh, I feel like we could be even further along if we actually made the playoffs, because obviously you get a little bit more XP when you're winning games like that, and in general, hitting milestones from being good enough to win games. Uh, but we'll take a look at the negotiations, which we pretty much took care of. There's fifth-year option question marks, which we'll uh, look at real quick as well. Uh, there is a chance that we take Quays. I feel like we could probably get him on 12 per, and if you wait any longer and he gets a higher overall, you end up losing the money you save in the long run anyways. The fifth-year option's really there for if a team can't physically afford them, you know, right now to give them that extension, and then if you don't know if they're that guy. Uh, but obviously, guys like Devontae Wyatt, I'm fine with losing, and then Quay, we can afford to extend long-term, so there's really no point in going fifth-year option like so many times out of, you know, 100 in a rebuild sense, whereas in real life, you don't know, you know, the, the player could have been looking to leave the whole time they were there, because they're like, I don't like being in the cold, I want to be in this team, I don't know, uh, but free agents, Hufanga, you know, he's a great player, and you know, some pretty good players here, but realistically, we just don't need them, Taron Johnson would be kind of like a shortcut, but I think Stokes still has just enough potential uh, to uh, try and start again as the number two guy, unless we find someone in the draft. O-line, I mean, interior, I suppose we could use, like, a center. Maybe Zach Tom finally goes to uh, to center, Morgan over to tackle, and then we sign, you know, Wyatt Teller. This team, you know, usually doesn't go to free agency for, like, the big-name offensive linemen, but I'm willing to maybe uh, make an exception here to, uh, quote-unquote, finish our offensive line. We'll see if we actually get him, though, and we do. Wyatt Teller, that's a really big contract for us to get. A three-year deal worth... $50 million, which for a guy of his talent, it's not that bad. But now that I think about it, 87 overall, I get he's superstar, but maybe I should have just done the two-year that he wanted in, uh, initially. But then again, maybe we don't get him if we don't offer that extra year. So we're going to finally do the real-life Green Bay Packers vision, it seems, which is uh, to move Tom to center, Morgan to tackle, and then you know we keep uh, Teller where he is. Pick 11, a lot higher of a draft pick than I thought we were going to have. Another kind of weak class at some of the biggest positions in the league, like uh, you know the uh, pass rush position. Who is this guy? I didn't really look at this guy. He was a top five, five foot nine, elite speed. He looks all right, but nothing spectacular. We don't really need a safety more than like maybe a corner. Uh, Dewan Edwards maybe is that guy even. 6'2", I thought I hit him, I thought I drafted him, 6'2", uh, you know, looking alright, to be fair, pretty athletic, I was thinking I might even go corner, but is that really that big of a need, I also had this, this was like the only real pass rusher that was like available, I was thinking, you know, maybe we have to replace uh, Lucas Van Ness, because he hasn't been great, but that guy doesn't look very great either, uh, what are the other guys we have, one or two for the tackle, one or two for uh, Barry, that's another pass rusher, who does look decent enough, uh, but he's not really, like, it's weird, he's supposed to be an edge rusher, but he's not really built to play edge rusher, Sharp might be a guy I just take later, and those 5'11 types usually are hidden dev, I'm debating on what I want to do, because we have, uh, a corner in Juan Vereen, but you also have the other guy that I just didn't expect to be there in, uh, Dewan Edwards, I don't know who's better, uh, 4-3-5, A man coverage, B catching, B press, versus Juan, who is about the same in speed. Player X a little bit worse. I mean, they're very similar. I do worry, though, that... I know it's round one still, technically, but is Dewan Edwards maybe f here more than he should be? Either way, I'm going to take him. Either way, I'm going to regret it. Damn! Didn't even really need a corner, but I figured, you know, of all the positions we do need, that would be, you know, in my opinion, probably the next up. Uh, we have a very late draft pick uh, brought to you by the Bengals... Uh, already Darby does look pretty good, despite the fact that it says he's not that great. Any other one to twos? Everett, the safety, I didn't get to scout him further, unfortunately. Even though I don't need DT that much, if Can's 21, I'm going to take him. He's 21, I think I have to take him. The value's there. Yeah, he is. Hidden Dev. I don't even know what I wanted to say there. I was like, yeah, it sounded like I was in, like, reverse. 31 in the second round, uh, you know, maybe protect the offensive line future-wise, even though we don't really need an offensive lineman just yet. That might be still the route we go. Any other two to threes that are still here? Linebacker, Kutcher. That's just really far from a position I need at all. Uh, Glover. Didn't I scout him further? Or maybe it was someone else. Oh, yeah, it was Morris, who does look pretty good, too. Offensive line. Brian Hall, maybe? Tony Henry? I like both of them. They're both, you know, big dudes as well. I'm going to take Brian Hall, who's normal dev. And then I think I might take the other one at 11, the other lineman 
Hopefully he's there, I guess. Uh, let's see if he is. The next pick will be in the fourth round. Not our best draft, but we'll see what that cornerback's overall is. I think we're going to take uh, Tony Henry. I don't really see why I would go any other route. Tony Henry's going to be our guy. Hidden? All right, there you go. I should have taken him in the first place, but ended up with both anyways. Future-proof the offensive line a little bit more, which is kind of surprising because in previous rebuilds we did recently, didn't do that despite desperately needing to. Uh, this is tough because I really want Sharp, but I also like six foot five cornerbacks. They're usually superstar. Problem is this one is very slow. I think I'm going to go with the pass rusher here. I'm going to go with uh, Sergio Sharp, who is pretty damn good looking, actually. And yeah, I mean, it's it was pretty predictable, let's be real. And I highly doubt that cornerback's still there, but if he is in the fifth round, I mean, I obviously have to take him. He is not, so forget about it. All right, draft recap. I'm just hoping for some high overalls. Yeah, I mean, the corner was 78, in fairness. Uh, the lineman, Brian Hall, was a high overall. So we drafted smart players, right? Like, 78 overall, 75 overall. They're good players. We just got unlucky with the devs, right? That that does happen, and it happens a lot at cornerback. Uh, Dewan Edwards looks great. He's just normal dev, unfortunately. Um, but as far as, like, is he better than the other guy? We'll have to see. Marquise can. He'll be the future DT, too. Uh, when Kenny Clark's probably gone after his contract ends somewhat soon-ish. Oh, and he's superstar. That's a win. Reggie White, interesting. But um, Brian Hall, 95, or, uh, 95, 75 overall. Doesn't look terrible. I mean, I don't know where you would play him. I guess we're going to put him at backup left tackle to learn behind Rashid Walker, who, once again, because he's normal dev, doesn't really have uh, the best outlook for his overall. Tony Henry, uh, is it left guard that we would want to replace in the future? Center, right guard? Might be right guard, honestly. I think right guard would be probably the most realistic position going forward that we would replace, uh, which is like three years from now. So I don't know, maybe future-proofing positions we don't need to. Took some backups. They weren't really the best. Sergio Sharp, though, the uh, star dev, I would imagine. No block shed edge rusher. Although some of those no block shed guys are super star. Let's see what we land. Oh, he's an X Factor. Okay, now that is the ultimate gem. I have not taken a gem like that before. I I think maybe we did actually take a superstar X Factor wide receiver in the past, but edge rusher X Factor this late? That is I mean it's not even like it was hard to find him. That is absurd. X Factor. Okay, let's take a look in that corner that we could have had and didn't take. I don't even know if he was a first rounder. I would have made him a first rounder if we didn't take the guy we did. Oh no. Okay, also 78 normal, in fairness. I think this guy did look a little bit more balanced than our guy, but hey, either way, it was basically choose a normal dev high overall, basically. So, I mean, it is what it is. We ended up with a pretty good player. And with that X-Factor edge rusher, I don't know when he'll play, if he'll ever play. We landed a pretty complete draft for the most part. Here we go for season three, the wide receivers. I'm not really liking the the progression here. You know, Christian Watson, he's an 81 overall. Reed, I suppose, is an 83 at least, but... The overalls are really not great. Offensive line, you mean even those overalls, especially Morgan, who was star dev after the first season, really haven't gone up. Musgrave, I mean, if it doesn't work out as a tight end, he can clearly be a sheriff somewhere. Oh my, that guy would not be able to buy drugs from anyone. Uh, defensively, linebackers look great. You know, this is a great group of linebackers. D-line is actually not too bad. It's just we're not really seeing much from anyone not named Gary, sadly. Safeties, Bullard's really not progressing. Stokes could be replaced by Edwards as you know, soon as next season. He's 26 now. He's a good press man corner, but once again, another kind of lower over than we would expect or hope for overall. Uh, and Bullard is a zone corner, or a safety Usually the lower overall safeties are because they're like hybrid type and it screws them over by going both instead of just, you know, zone coverage. But now he's just, you know, he's slowly progressing along. And looking at the XP sliders, this is usually kind of the baseline I use for uh, rebuilds. So, I don't know. I, I just think we're a little unlucky. Center, I actually usually do about 160. Um, but, yeah, so far just not doing so well because we're not making the playoffs. 24 now, Texas now, FC now, Fortnite now, FC now, Texas now, 24 now. I don't know what I missed, but apparently we're broke. When did this happen? Wait, are they auto -neg No, they're not negotiating. We're just starting them. Um, okay. Uh, I don't like the fact that we have, like, half the offense on here. 
We're definitely going to pay uh, Quay Walker, but I don't know where we're going to get the rest of the money from. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. I, I, maybe we can release Preston Smith or something like that. But $5 million left with Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Rasheed Walker, and Zach Tom on our re-sign list is not what I was expecting here. We had a pretty unbelievable season, which guarantees us a bye week. Which, saying that though, we did kind of choke near the end of the season. It's kind of crazy to think because we had a 13-4 and four season. But we actually played really badly at the end of the year. Uh, that is the wrong thing. If you look at our season, we were like 13-1 for a while. And then we lost like the last three. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately lost the last three. Some pretty tough opponents in there in fairness. But overall, a great year nonetheless. Which is going to lead to a bye week, giving us a much better chance at potentially winning the Super Bowl. Taking a look at the numbers, uh, I have the Falcon scheme on just like last season. Didn't change anything. Uh, I felt like, you know, we just need more years under the belt. I don't know if that's true or not, but we've had a really good year here to the, this season. Josh Jacobs, almost to 2,000 yards rushing. And once again, kind of Musgrave should go to Sardev. Uh, kind of spreading it out a little bit. Romeo Dobbs not really having a great year there at all. Um, offensive line, I mean, not bad. But once again, money is a problem. I don't know where the hell we're going to find the money to pay these players. Lucas Van Ness, I think, is going to be gone. I think we're going to probably trade him off for, like, maybe a late first, early second. As much as, you know, he hasn't necessarily played up to par, his value because of his age slash overall is up there. You know, so just because we're getting unlucky doesn't mean he's not worth uh, something. Josh Jacobs was numbered. I got to see. There's got to be massive touchdowns. Uh, best O-line at number two for Ellen. That would have been amazing if we would have got that. D-line Gary at number two. Uh, some decent stuff there. But I really need to see. I accidentally backed out. I want to see Kenneth Walker's numbers. For him to... Oh, actually, it was right there, wasn't it? Damn it. For him to win that over Jacobs. Like, what kind of yards are we looking at here? Look at the yards. I think there was three guys at 1,900. Yo, what is happening? 2,088 rushing yards for Joe Mixon. Jacobs at 1960 and then Walker at 1933. What is going on? That's insane. That is crazy high numbers. Either way, let's go on to the divisional round as we are automatically there because of the first round by the Rams, I mean, that is a beatable opponent. Could go to the championship round. Green Bay's got a little bit of history with not really doing much more than that. But, you know, at least we can maybe get there. Go to the end of the game. The Rams scoring a touchdown very quickly. Scoring another field goal after that. We get a touchdown finally on the board. It is a pretty close one here. Back and forth. We get the touchdown before half, giving us a four-point lead. Second half, we get another touchdown. Up by 11. The Rams not going away. Get a field goal. It's an eight-point game. They get an interception, which leads to a touchdown. No field goal or two-point. They then get another touchdown. Now down by five. We are with their ball. We must be turning the ball, ball over at, like, a playoff history record at this rate. Because it just seems like they're on our side of the field all game long. Jacobs being a blocker on the biggest play of the game is also something. Romeo Dobbs to the outside, and somehow that guy covers the inside, gets over to Romeo Dobbs, and makes the play. It being a linebacker is more disgustingly hilarious on top of it. Who even was that? Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm glad you showed us. It wasn't a linebacker, actually. Who the hell even is it? Desmond King, who has a pick this game. I should have seen him running over that. I thought he was going to bait it out and go for Musgrave, but no, he just clutches up, I guess. Sweet, dude. Not that it would probably matter the way this team is playing. Yeah, they don't deserve to win anyways. Nice. Lost to the Scrub Rams. The Scrubs. That's crazy. Baker Mayfield is the quarterback for them, apparently. Uh, Jordan Love did not play well. I mean, there was a lot of turnovers in this game. or I don't know what it was because they had the ball on our side of the field like all second half, it seems. Like, I don't know. We were just like shanking every punt, but we were terrible. And we lost to a team that's an 84 overall. That's fun. Please at least tell me the Rams, like, we're just on a magical season or something where, like, you know, they're about to have their spot in the playoffs, the Super Bowl even. And nope, they give it to the Bears. Thank you. We love you. As the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, apparently we have 27 million, maybe more if Preston can be released. Uh, maybe we can keep some of these players after all. Offensively, Musgrave goes up and dead, but that is it. Don't even know if I want to keep Watson or uh, Romeo Dobbs at this rate, to be honest. I mean, they're not playing poorly, but that's not based on them being them. It's just based on their position on the roster, really. That's literally all there is to it. 
Uh, defensively, I don't think anyone went up in dev. I believe no one went up in dev yet again, unfortunately, but the overalls are at least starting to, you know, bounce up a little bit. But let's see it. Let's see how much money we officially do have. And once again, President Smith probably could be released. Might have to play the real-life card in this one just to keep some of those linemen, which I do kind of want to keep. I don't really care too much about the wide receivers, I don't think. But we'll see. Uh, 27 mil, Lucas Van Ness. I think we trade him off for decent value. Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson. I don't like the value. I don't like their overalls compared to their age either. And honestly, I don't really care too much for Rasheed Walker. I'll grab Zach Tom back, but I think that's going to be it. Maybe I should have signed him for longer, but... I'm going to let everyone else go. So we are taking a little bit of a hit, but that's okay because I think we can replace them through the draft. And we've already got a couple of guys that can, you know, replace players already. Zach Tom can go right over to left tackle, and then the guard that we drafted last season uh, or in this last draft could just start right away. So I think that's A-OK. -okay. I think that's fine. Maybe I should have signed Zach Tom to a three or a four, but that's all right. So we have money. Let's see. Uh, not really money. We have 16 mil. We have a little bit of money. See if there's anyone here. Corner could be an upgrade, but I don't think it's worth spending money at that position. Gabe Davis, I think that's a little bit too costly for a guy that I don't think is going to provide that much value. Jamison Williams, we'll see how he's played, but he's not really interested in joining us, so I don't see how we find a, a, a spot for him with uh, the money he's asking. So realistically, it'd be maybe wide receiver we go money, uh, spend money on, but I don't know if even that's going to happen because... No one's really interested in joining us for some reason. Jamison Williams, who would have been probably number two for a while, never really showed his value. Jahan Dotson uh, didn't even play last season for the Chiefs, which you know, is kind of crazy. I'm not really sure what to think about that. Uh, release. I mean, he's not a bad player, but maybe I throw an offer on one of these wide receivers and then based on who is available, maybe I do just get Romeo Dobbs back just to have... You know, a familiar face, 3 or 33. I don't know if even he would join us. Uh, did he? He did not yet. And he joins us. So, I mean, still going to look at wide receiver in the draft, I think. But uh, we at least have Romeo Dobbs back. And we'll see if we can save a little bit more money by, you know, maybe releasing Preston Smith. And Preston would be officially off the roster by this season. So we can let him go without taking any sort of penalty, which I suppose, in fairness, isn't crazy high anyways. But that will, in theory, save us a little bit of money, so uh, we'll be fine, I think. Anyone else? Anyone else looking to get sent away? Uh, as far as, like, savings now, it doesn't really seem to be. As far as long-term contract players, uh, I don't see anyone here either that would make any sense. I'm not sure who we're going to be losing in the future, but yeah, we're going to definitely try to trade off Lucas Van Ness, even right now, and just start sharp and just hope he does something, because Lucas has been terrible. He has done nothing for us. Uh, corner, maybe Hugh Tate. I mean, that's a fair trade. Would like to keep him out of the conference, so I don't feel as dumb, but we'll see. Wide receiver would be nice, too, but I don't think anyone's going to be giving us a prime wide receiver for uh, an unproven edge rusher. Hugh Tate. I might just try to get a draft pick off of uh, Tampa instead. Hugh Tate's very valuable, though. I think 44 is pretty fair. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so fair enough. I have to kick back like a sixth or something like that, but I'm down with that. Yeah, that's that's fine. That is perfectly fine with me. There we go. Lucas Van Ness, a sixth this and a seventh two years from now for a pretty good second-round pick. It's going to be Sharp's time to shine, especially since he's an X-Factor. Doesn't help, uh, you know, Lucas that he was terrible. So we are starting the draft, and this is going to be a draft uh, that we're going to be slow simming early on as... Uh, there's a couple of wide receivers. I don't know exactly who I want. I, I uh, further scouted two of them. So we definitely have a couple of names. Uh, as soon as one of those names goes, that's when I stop. That's when I look further into it. Uh, Williams is actually an edge rusher that I have on my list as well. I'm surprised he went that high. I don't even know if he was one to two or not, but he went high. That's all I know. And Ship, I think, was one of them. I think Ship was my very first wide receiver I had on my list. So looking at who we have here... I think I'd like to go with one of the three here. Bridges, Pope, or Sharp. Richards is the fastest of the bunch, I believe. At a, yeah, 4 2 9. Uh, Bridges and Pope, not the fastest, but they're fast enough, especially for the size that they have. 4 4 5 is okay for a 6 foot 4 dude. And then Pope, who's also 21, is 4 4 3. The left side says he is slower, though, I will admit. And then Jordan Sharp could have another Sharp here on the, uh, the Packers. Elite speed, 2 to 3. I might take 2. 
I might get greedy. I might go until we're down to just Pope uh, with the other wide receiver. And then with that pick we got for uh, Lucas Van Ness, I might end up, uh, if the other guy's there, taking him or even trading up. Because I think uh, Sharp is probably the best of those four. And so far, so good with the remaining players. And it looks like we're going to have a choice. I think I'm probably going to go with the wide receiver Bridges just because of the speed on the left side saying he's faster. So let's see. Excel is only decent versus great agility with Pope being good Excel. Yeah, I think athletically Bridges is better. So I'm going with athleticism. Desmond Bridges, hidden dev. I mean, I kind of expect both of them to be hidden dev. Not going to lie. And honestly, I'm going to do what the Packers maybe should have done in real life, which is just trade to 31 for Christian Watson. Uh, and I'm going to trade up for Sharp just so I can get that fifth-year option. I know it's not something we actually need because, you know, we aren't going to be even... Wow, they're negative 42 mil. Uh, we're not going to be even close to a round still by the time, uh, you know, we see that, uh, that option. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I think is realistic and not even just realistic, but smart. Even if we're not going to be here, that's fine. I don't care if we're not going to be here. I want uh, I want to do the move that I think would make the most sense in real life. A lot of, uh, you know, ironically enough, a lot of value for those picks. You know, a lot of quantity. But keeping that 28th pick in the second round was kind of important to me. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, that DT, you know, I kind of wanted to see what he was about. But wide receiver Jordan Sharp, 2-3. to three. Usually that's around 10-15. to 15, But we want that fifth-year option. We trade up, and we land a hidden dev. I mean, I thought there was a chance he would be normal, but... That's five years, if you wanted the fifth-year option, you know, spent with both of those wide receivers, which I think just absolutely, you know, solves the wide receiver issue if there is one. Wow, Thomas is still there. Wait, no, Thomas wasn't even the guy we wanted. Bridges and, um, damn, I can't remember the other guy's name, was the guy we were looking at. Uh, offensive line, Dalton Smith looks pretty good. Do we just take him here? We had a couple of other players, but honestly, we're so damn future-proof. We don't need anyone, unless you're going to grab Kent to potentially replace Gary uh, for the future, 6'4", but he's not, I mean, he's not the fastest. He does look very valuable here, though. Do we even need O-line that bad? I'm going to grab him. I'm going to grab Devin Kent, and he's hidden. I know he's not the fastest, but a power move for an edge rusher, and it was in the second round, the late second round, I was willing to take that chance. I mean, I feel like we can get, you know, offensive linemen, dime a dozen edge rushers that could be, you know... Hidden Dev could be really high power move slash finesse move. Not a dime a dozen. We're going to trade in Tucker Craft, Jacob Monk, a third this and a fifth next to move up, I don't even know, 12 spots of the Buccaneers here in the third round. Going to be using that pick, I believe, on an offensive lineman. Uh, I think there was a center that was looking pretty good. Uh, Dalton Smith is still there. That's going to be my choice. 21-year-old Dalton Smith, who's Hidden Dev. I feel like center is probably the safest hidden dev of like any of the linemen i would say in my opinion and i kind of meant to go to the next round but it's all right i imagine by the start of the fifth it would have been pretty much dead anyways but we'll see see we're late fifth now uh pritchett why not right nick pritchett 5 11 22 why not actually i mean we'll see and we have nothing else <laughs> either way uh i like the draft i think we had a pretty good draft we'll see what the actual overalls are but based on the hiddens and the positions we got those hiddens at I don't really think we could beat what we just did. More depth, more future-proofing. We're, we're looking all right, I think. And the wide receiver is sharp, 77 overall. A uh, lot of 74s. Uh, that other safety looked pretty bad. But Desmond Bridges. Why did we uh, get Romeo Dobbs back? We should have just went the youth route. Star Dev, wear number 17. Sure, I guess, if that's what you want to do. And then Jordan Sharp. I mean, Romeo Dobbs really is the odd man out. Like, do you put Romeo Dobbs at 2, Sharp at 3, and then Bridges at 4? Like, that's kind of what I'm feeling. I, honestly, Devin Kent, Hidden Dev, uh, you know, he's not the best. Block Shed's obviously low. Power Move's all right. Definitely not the most athletic, but still, I think the value is there. Star Dev, unfortunately, nothing higher, but like I said, I think the value is there. Where Why not? We're number 58, and then Center, I don't really care what the Dev is there. Uh, I'm curious to see what the other wide receiver was, though, because we did have a choice at him as well. Did we make a mistake? Uh, Bridges, Sharp, where's the other guy? Pope, 73 overall to the Cardinals, also uh, Star Dev Plus. 94 jumping, I don't know, base ratings right now. I think our guy's slightly better. 
Let's take a look at the dev start up as well. So it didn't really matter. The Arizona Cardinals offering me Trey Benson for Dontavion Wicks. I mean, their overalls are pretty similar. Their ages are pretty similar. The only difference is Trey Benson is star dev, and he plays a more commonly uh, star gotten or had position. A lot of teams have, uh, you know, really good running backs. Not a whole lot of teams have really good wide receivers. Uh, Marshawn Floyd's pretty good too, but I think if you're going to, you know, keep one of these guys for the future, I mean, I think you go Trey Benson just because he has that star dev, but we'll see what happens. Here's the team for year number four. I'm really just like, why are we investing in Romeo Dobbs still? Obviously, Jaden Reed, you know, the release isn't that great, but his overall is pretty good. But Romeo Dobbs, is he, is he 26? He's 26, normal dev. It feels so weird putting him at number four. Um, I think I put him at number four. I think I do. Bridges at number two, Sharp at number three. I just think the, you know, by the time it's year three or year four, the realism, while it's still in play and I'm still trying to be realistic, I also need to throw a little bit of Madden in there, right? I need to throw a little bit of Madden in there. You're also arguing that, hey, Romeo Dobbs at 83 overall normal at 26 is like, he's not really progressing then. That means, you know, maybe you do need a new wide receiver and maybe someone else with higher dev chance and potential comes in and steals the job. Either way, defensive line, Sharp is brand new. 73, well, as a starter, 73 overall, X-Factor, 83 power move. I'm really curious to see what he does. No block shed at all. We'll see what happens, but uh, a real big question as well is what kind of money are we going to have? Because, I mean, we were in a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble last season, and, and it is kind of sucky that we paid Romeo Dobbs because we just don't need him now. But I didn't want to, you know, have no backup plan in case... You know, we didn't land any wide receivers. Pure pain. We lost to the 1-8 Detroit Lions while we were kind of turning the season around. A lot of money, but also a lot of big names needing contracts. <laughs> Bro! What do you mean? 25 mil per... Bro. What? Wow, there are some expensive names. This is crazy, dude. Like, there, I just, I don't understand why EA does this. If I put him at middle linebacker, how much is he going to ask for? Based on his ratings here, this, to me, looks like 12 to 15 per. That's what I see it as, personally. Let's see if he's actually at middle linebacker, what they see. And, I mean, that's what they see. They see 15. That is completely fair. I don't care what anyone wants to say. A five-year 72, That that's all... What did he say? Did he say that's a great deal, but I don't want to sign right now? He's like, that's a good deal, but no, I don't care. I don't want to be here. Jair Alexander, obviously cornerback one, cornerback two even on this team. Cornerback three is all damn three corners. 38 million left. Jaden Reed, obviously he's wide receiver one here. So let's do a three-year 34, which is a steal for us, but he is also a pretty low overall. McKinney is questionable. Uh, Musgrave, I think based on his overall, I'd want to do the deal. So we'll do that. 39 mil. Kenny Clark, I think he's just a cap casualty of this raid. And then Javon Bullard. You know, it's weird to be like, oh, play it how it lies, but then change the Edrin Cooper's position to make him cheaper. You know, it's kind of like... But at the same time, that is one of the most egregious ones I've seen. He's an 87 overall 25-year-old, and they wanted me to pay him $25 million per year to be off-ball. That's too much. I've seen 18, I've seen to 20, and it's like, okay, I guess, if you really think they're that good, but 25 mil for an off-ball linebacker is too much. That is too much. McKinney, I mean, if he wouldn't have said yes, I would have been like, yeah, okay, that is too expensive, I'm not going to do it. So, Kenny Clark, we already have the replacement. Trey Benson, I think we're just going to have Josh Jacobs play out his career, so there's kind of no point. Uh, and then Elton Jenkins, I think, is a cap casualty as well, which... I always say it, if you're going to try to keep a team as good as possible, the guys that are usually going to be uh, taking the hits are on that offensive line, unfortunately. This could be a failed rebuild. We had it with the Saints where we clutched up right at the end and won a Super Bowl, but I don't know if this is going to be one of them. I don't feel like we are as far along, despite the quarterback being pretty good of an overall uh, as that rebuild even. I mean, the wide receiver position is just... It is just not progressed, and in general... We've had weird seasons. Like, I don't know how you go 13-4 and four to needing a complete scheme change because you're playing so badly. We don't go in 8-9. I mean, 
I ended up with the Chiefs scheme this year because we had such a terrible start. Buffalo's defense and a 4-3. And we just sucked. <laughs> I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Like, losing to a 1-8 at the time Detroit Lions team. Like, what did the Lions finish as? 3-14. and Did we lose both games to them this year? There's no way, right? There's no way. Okay, we did win one at least. That is crazy, though. Like, we are just losing so many winnable games with this Packers team. I mean, I guess that's, like I said, pretty realistic. Look at the season for love. It's so bad. Jacobs even had a down year. Reed might have gotten a superstar. Big freaking whoop. Uh, O-line, uh, Jenkins was great. Watch this. will be the year he goes to superstar. It always happens. Uh, Gary was great. Kenny Clark was pretty good. Sharp was very good compared to Lucas's seasons. Linebackers, uh, you know, interception's not the best. Hutton has been great, though. We have... S this is the rebuild of the kickers. That is really all there is to this one. Uh, Joe Burrow wins MVP. Any award wins? None. Quarterback was number six for the touchdown to pick ratio. Jacobs at number four. Wide receiver at number nine. O-line, Allen Jenkins, we just talked about it. Of course it happens. Gary at three. Linebackers, no. DB, no. Kicker, we win kicker of the year with Hutton. Pretty unfortunate, though. But realistically, what do you draft that makes this team, like, goaded? I, I don't think there is anything. All of these seasons and just nothing really happened. I mean, we got that 13-4 season, lost immediately to the Rams, who just had no business of beating us, like, at all. Yeah, they did. Eagles versus the Chiefs. Glad to see a new matchup. And the Chiefs win. I mean, we're about to lose Alton Jenkins, about to lose Kenny Clark. I don't know how this team gets better. I really don't. Uh, Alton Jenkins obviously goes up in dev. Musgrave goes up in dev. Reed doesn't, unfortunately. And then defensively, we had no dev ups, which is unfortunate. Maybe Can, actually. Was Can already superstar? Wait, how did he... Was Can already superstar and we just didn't know, or I did know and I just forgot? Well, it definitely makes the the decision to start Can this next season over Clark, and you know because we can't afford him, a little easier. I got to admit, been a pretty damn good overall this whole way through, and just unfortunately the sim has been so up and down. See if any money decides to appear, and maybe we get to keep Elton Jenkins. But outside of that, I don't think we're gonna be able to keep anyone. Which even then, even if we have money, I, I don't even know if it's worth keeping Elton. 15 mil, like I said, I highly doubt we have anybody we can get rid of. Cap casualty time, it seems. Yeah, that's just going to be the way it is. I mean, Wyatt, it's like, you know, you keep Alan Jenkins or you keep Wyatt Teller. Obviously, we don't have much of a choice at this point because we already paid Wyatt Teller. But realistically, you know, you were going to lose a superstar lineman. I would have preferred at this rate to have lost Wyatt Teller. But I suppose Wyatt is a little bit cheaper anyways. About 3 million per year less, but let's look at the uh, negotiations and just say farewell to some of our players, unfortunately. And they're all going to be gone. <laughs> Where did 28 million come from? Uh, Chris Jones. Ooh, ooh, that would be a name. Jalen Carter would be a name, too. Uh, Ellen Jenkins, of course, somehow getting more offers than Frank. I guess it actually does kind of make sense. I don't know what I'm saying. Kenny Clark, I would love to keep our, like, super go to DTs, but I don't think that's going to happen. Joe Tooney's 34. Can we get Elton Jenkins back on a one-year deal? I mean, he doesn't even want to come back, which is unfortunate. One year 21, what are the other teams looking at? I mean, we're the highest, but I don't think that's going to happen. Whatever, we're going to try it. Elton Jenkins does not sign with us. Kenny Clark is still there. Kenny Clark did have a pretty good year. I mean, that's, like, one of the last positions we really need someone at. Joe Tooney, just to keep uh, a superstar left guard. And the Cardinals are giving us a fight. Joe Tooney joins them, even. Eef. Well, we're drafting offensive line. We are in the draft. Oh, we have pick 13. I don't know why I thought we were going to be, like, pick 8 or something. There appears to be two generational players, in my opinion, in Dennard Foster, or Denard Foster, and Ezekiel Wheaton. Uh, just based on the two, uh, A finesse and A power move, uh, not the strong, you know, not the strongest, not the fastest, but on that left side, insane eliteness. I would be willing to hardcore bet. And then obviously Wheaton is like a clear cut, obvious generational player. Look at all those A's. If one of them falls, I might make a trade up. But unfortunately, those are positions I don't really need players at. And we're all the way at 13. So 
I don't know if I see that happening. There are also some other pass rushers. I'm not saying that's our biggest need. It's just, I think if you're at 13 overall, it's kind of the position you go for now. You just go for pass rusher because it's the highest value if it's not a quarterback, which we don't need. Uh, but the Titans, let's see who they take. They take Foster the and the Lions take Wheaton. That is unfortunate. So uh, the Generationals, especially the Lions, we had to face one of them. Nice. Of course, they didn't really play well last year. Either did we, in fairness, but... Let's take a look if there's any pass rushers left. I really didn't care too much. Like, I needed to get one of the pass rushers, but, you know, if they're there, they're there. Uh, Keelan Creighton, cornerback as well, could be an option. Chuck Gathers, uh, not the fastest guy in the world. Uh, I thought it was an A power move. Did that change last second? Uh, man, I don't know what to do, because Creighton is definitely a guy I need more. But I think Jamal Jenkins, the value is higher. He is 22 years old, though, in fairness. Pretty damn fast. A finesse move, A awareness, B tackle. I'm going to grab Jamal Jenkins, who is hidden development trade. So we have insane value and insane depth at the edge bot. Might still try to go for Creighton. We'll see what happens. I'll go to like 22, and if he's still there, I think the value to uh, trade up is is definitely worth it. Yeah, we have uh, probably potentially letting Rashawn Gary go because we have Dent as a backup and then that new guy as a backup as well. Got a lot of really good players playing backup on this team. We end up trading quite a bit. Hall, Gonzalez, a second this, a sixth this, a third and a fourth next year to move all the way to 22. Hoping even though we don't need alignment just yet, we can get an offensive alignment at 13 in the third round. But this is going to be Mr. Creighton. Corner is not even really that big of a need. But the fact that we've kind of wasted the corner number three on our team for a while, if this guy's good, we can actually trade off that corner if we wanted to. Mr. Keelan Creighton, 22 years old, pretty damn fast. A man, B zone, please be hidden. Not again! Back-to-back -back times, we see an amazing corner, and they were normal both times. That sucks. Also, linebacker's kind of an issue. I didn't really think about that. Maybe even take a linebacker over O-line. We'll see who we like more. Kenny looks great, though. Oh, there is no... Oh, no, there is one. There's Mackie. Doesn't look that good, though. I'm gonna go Kenny and kind of call it a draft. Sean Kenny... Huh. Yeah, not a good draft. That, uh, that pass rusher we got could be an X-Factor, and I would still call this an L-Draft. That was not good for what is, in theory, technically the final season. This Packers rebuild not going so well, unfortunately. Let's take a look at this mid-draft class. Another 78 overall normal corner. That lineman is really annoying, though. Jamal Jenkins, uh, good finesse move. Okay, block shed. I mean, if he starred dad, like, that was just a terrible draft class. Yikes. That draft class sucked. That was not my, uh, not my proudest moment. Not my favorite draft class we've ever had, that's for sure. I don't know what it would take for us to do a sixth season, but if we're not even close, I don't think that's going to be it. And, I mean, this is far from the best team we've ever built, but once again, we've shown it time and time again Making the playoffs consistently, winning playoff games in general, is the best way to develop players. And we really haven't been in the playoffs that much. So it's obviously going to take a hit. And, you know, now that I think about it, Teller is going to probably drop in overall a little bit. Jacobs is going to continue to regress. This might be the best window. You got to pay Gary coming up here. I don't know. This might be the final season where we're like, you know, one of the better teams in the league. I, I mean, this might be the final season officially. Of all the rebuilds for us to truly fail, which we haven't really truly failed a rebuild in a while, the Packers, of course. We're kind of choking a little bit. Rashawn Gary is obviously our best edge rusher. This is a fair contract for Van Buren, uh, Andrews, Morgan. So Morgan's definitely gone. Teller, I would say, is also gone. Tom is probably gone because of the price. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is the best uh, season, you know, final, final season we really have. So uh, I think this might be actually the final year. Rashawn Gary, like I said, he's our best edge rusher. I don't care how many edge rushers we've drafted. It's all about actually performing on the field as well, which no one else has done so far. Uh, you know, last year that X-Factor did pretty well, but I don't know what he's like this season. And uh, obviously Van Ness was really just terrible. Sean Andrews, maybe that's the position you draft of the future is just DT. He's an 82 overall, but he's really not done like anything. Like he's played DT1 for like a season now. And DT2 for a lot of seasons, and he's just shown nothing. He's just shown nothing. So maybe you choose one more of the linemen to keep, and then everyone else is gone. 
Which I think when you're you're thinking about which one to keep, I'm gonna say it's Zach Tom. So 20 million left. We bumped the contract a little bit on Van Buren, but we're gonna lose Andrews, we're gonna lose Morgan, we're gonna lose Wyatt Teller. Pretty damn good season. Can we finish it out strong against the Rams? And we can! 13 and 4. I ran the Chiefs and the Bill, uh, Bills defense. The Chiefs offense, Bills defense last season. Wow, we would not have won in the AFC. Holy crap. Ran the Chiefs and the, the Bills schemes last year. Didn't matter. This year, however, a whole new ball game, apparently. This is the year that we are back in the playoffs. Back with the first seed. Early on, really didn't look that good. You know, it's like, oh, I don't know. We're doing well, but... Might just barely make the playoffs, but no, we get the bye week from the NFC side, which I know isn't really saying a whole lot. Let's take a look at those numbers. Jordan Love, Superstar. Oh, he failed the breakout earlier in the year. Could have went to X-Factor, but he will go to Superstar, which is great. Josh Jacobs was great again. Musgrave was great. Jaden Reed was decent. The touchdowns might be enough for Superstar. Uh, the the youngsters, not the best numbers. Offensive line, uh, didn't really miss a beat. I mean, Dalton Smith looked great. So, I mean, do you really even need to pay linemen at all? I don't know. Sacks, Rashawn Gary, still the only guy doing anything. This is this is ridiculous. Like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah, he's got to do something about the numbers. Hutton, 11 for 13. I mean, nowadays in real life, like, I wouldn't call it luck because they obviously have to work for it. But there are a lot of players that don't even have good seasons, like, from a technicality standpoint, but still put up sack numbers just because of the surrounding talent or just, you know, getting to the quarterback you know, it, all it takes is a couple of good reps. Yet in Madden, you could have a goaded player, and they still won't get sacks. Like, uh, offensive player of the year goes to Jacobs. Obviously, we've seen Love at the number six spot for MVP. Seventh spot? I don't know. He was up there, though. Uh, other awards, nothing for rookie. Love was number two, so obviously superstar to have there. Josh Jacobs, uh, the best running back in the NFC. Best wide receiver, number two for Jaden Reed. The touchdowns, like I said, should be enough for superstar. D-line, uh, Gary at 10 Linebacker, no. DB at six. Kicker at nine. Into the divisional round. If we can at least, like I said, I think a championship round visit is at least a, a you know, kind of a, a push on whether you won or lost a rebuild. It's kind of just like a, a tie. But if you get to the Super Bowl, I think that's an automatic win. It's, I think it's a, a dub Super Bowl or a rebuild, if you will. Look at the Cardinals. All of these players are like non-real... Well, I can't even say non-real life, but you know what I mean. Non-real life created players? I don't even know. The Colts beat the Ravens, which is interesting. The Baltimore Colts. Uh, let's see it. The Cardinals. I mean, their scheme is not the best. That is 100% factual. But we did see them win a Super Bowl in that Marvin Harrison Jr. career sim. And man, is this year... It's weird. I really do feel like there's something about having a whole year under your belt with a scheme that makes them wow what a freaking game shutout shutout blowout which is unbelievable but uh there's something about having a full year under the scheme that works at least for me i don't know um but one of the times we did accidentally have it's not even our fault i think when you get a new dc or an oc the game brings on that play, that coach's uh like scheme uh, so we had the Chargers defensive scheme for like half of a season one year. It might have been like the year before last year. Sharp, I mean, his power move's got to be pretty damn good. But like I said, just not really putting up the numbers where we were hoping for. x Factor is going to make you a pretty good overall. Just it's not going to guarantee you success, apparently. Championship round, like I said, it's kind of a push at this rate. Who are we going against? The Commander. I mean, I don't want to like jinx it, but this is the most Mickey Mouse Super Bowl trip if we win this, I've ever seen. And then you have the Colts in the Super Bowl. Like I said, I don't want to jinx it. Because the Commanders could beat us here. But, like, this is the easiest scheme-wise that I've ever seen. Like, no Cowboys busted schemes. No Chiefs busted schemes. You know, it's unbelievable. And it looks like we will be headed to the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know how it clutches up all the time like this. You know, I'll show you guys we didn't, like, force any wins in the playoffs or anything like that. You know, it was actually a really... Wow, Jordan Love and Jaden Daniels had themselves a game. It was actually pretty frustrating up until this, like, kind of final season. Yeah, we had a bye week before, but we lost immediately to the Rams. I mean, you could probably even hear it in my voice that I was pretty pissed off losing to an 84 overall team. Uh, but the Rams scheme is pretty hit or miss in game. Sometimes you get goaded numbers, sometimes you don't. But 84 overall just felt like, really? That's the team that's knocking us out? That feels so... Saki, but 
once again, it's going to be considered a, uh, a rebuild win, I think, because once again, we made the Super Bowl. And honestly, this is one of our more like straightforward, realistic rebuilds where we didn't trade for like, you know, some player to, to do a shortcut to a position of need. You know, Lucas Van Ness, I think based on his dev age and overall was worth the, the play, you know, the, the draft pick we got, which in fairness, they agreed with. Right. And we also added a little bit to it. So either way, here it is the final game of the rebuild against the Indianapolis Colts. I guess before we do that, let's take a look at the dev up should see a few on offense, read and love at least read didn't go up and dad. That is so crazy. Musgrave finally an X factor though, which is great. Uh, you can see Superstar X Factor. He's he's pretty good. He's really fast, obviously. And then Jordan Love finally gets the Superstar. That morale boost is ridiculous right now. NFL passing was it yards or touchdowns leader? I don't know. But defensively, no dev ups, man. We have really just not had any dev ups for this uh, defense, like at all. That's kind of unfortunate. But hey, we're at the Super Bowl, so I can't really say it hurt us too much, at least right now. Here it is. We are a 90 overall. They are an 89. Let's see if we can do it. Wow, wait, Drummond. Isn't that the guy that we saw that was like round one and we had like a late first and he looked okay but not great? Was he always an X-Factor? I don't even know, but he's he's an X-Factor now. But here it is for all the marbles. Can we win a Super Bowl with the Packers? Wow, the Colts scored very quickly. 14-0. to zero. Nice drive. It took a long time. Oh, the Colts are... The Colts are kind of ussing right now. This is how we've been playing up until this point. 27 to 14. There's still a game here, but that might be it. I mean, all of that clock for them to just get down the field and score a field goal. Although, field goal, two-point conversion. You got to get a stop at the third and six. This is kind of it because of the field position as well. I think you go mid-blitz. This is kind of the earliest we've come in. But this feels like one of those situations where you don't get this. It realistically could be over. And we get the sack, Gary. Very lucky to not get called for P.I. I really thought they were going to call that when I kind of bumped into Jonathan Taylor there. See if the team can do it from the 21-yard line. He throws a pick right away. Jordan Love ain't clutch. He's not him. And this team will not win a Super Bowl. I'm going to come in try to, I don't know, pull off some miracle. Clock's going to drain 30 seconds off because we're not trying to score here. That makes a lot of sense. I should have taken that sooner. How is he covering both? Like, can we not cover both, please? Kenny Moore is like two feet tall, and he's old. We're on that same play, because I could have probably taken the wheel early. I just didn't think that he was going to leave it that early. And this time he actually covers it. Well, he's not... How? How are they playing? What a hit by Musgrave. Of course it's Drummond that picks. He's wearing number 16. We got picked off by a guy number wearing number 16. How is he covering that? He has number 7. He doesn't really have number 17 to cover. I should have just bulleted that. But, like, he just knows. That ball took so long to come down to. That's just painful. Oh, well. Packers will not win a Super Bowl in this rebuild. Still got to the Super Bowl, though. That's... About as good as you can ask for sometimes. Losing some starters. Jordan Love throws two picks. I mean, he really did sell. And Jacobs was terrible. Musgrave tried to clutch. But yeah, this uh, that offense just sold, really. It was just the offense doing nothing. Obviously, the defense wasn't great, but offense given a lot of short fields, it seemed. Regardless, though, that is unfortunately going to be the end of that one. I do want to see like where we would be regression-wise, where it would be re-sign-wise... And uh, obviously this team would be, for the most part, intact to try and run it back. But yeah, you would be losing some of your starters, obviously. The DT and, you know, Wyatt Teller and all that good stuff. Really surprised that the offensive line has played as well as it has, though. Like, they really, they haven't really missed a beat while losing starters. It's kind of surprising. But, you know, you lose Andrews, you lose Morgan, you lose Kelly, and you lose Wyatt Teller. So... Yeah, you lose a little bit of starters. It's not the worst I've ever had in a rebuild, but it definitely is pretty significant, especially for the offensive line to lose two starters in the same season. We've usually been losing one or none per year. Well, let's take a look at some of these players. Obviously, uh, Zach Tom's a real-life Packer, so we'll take a look at him. Amazing pass blocking and in general... Well, maybe not pass block power, but in general finesse blocking, but also just good towards the pass blocking regardless. Uh, obviously, Jordan Morgan, real-life first-rounder. 
Didn't really develop the way I'd want him to. Bad pass block, bad plant, pass block, finesse. Everything else was pretty good, though. If he was still playing guard, I think that would be great. Musgrave, we just kind of looked at a little bit ago, but 86 overall. Uh, you know, a little bit of a slow start, but finally got it together. Pretty good route running, really good catching, and obviously just a freak with the size and speed combo. Jaden Reed is now an 89 overall. Release sucks, but... He's pretty good overall. He's got a lot of uh, good ratings. Just that release is the one that isn't. Sharp, you know, still needs a lot more years left. Release is amazing. Great deep route as well. Pretty fast and decent enough catching. Bridges. Desmond Bridges also really young, obviously. Uh, you know, good short route and good catching. Two, two or three more seasons away from having, like, the best trio wide receivers in the league. Josh Jacobs at 30 is still really good. Really, unfortunately, sold a short in that uh, Super Bowl, but can't be perfect all the time. Jordan Love, uh, you know, proving that as well in the Super Bowl. I mean, he's really balanced. What, 93 short, 90 medium, 92 deep, 95 throw power. He's really good. He's really good. Defensively, I don't know who Lee is, but defensively. Xavier McKinney, I'm not sure why I'm even showing him because he would have regressed hard. He's 84 speed. No shot. Javon Bullard, 83 overall, 26 years old. Didn't really progress the way I'd want him to. I'd want a little bit higher than this, but 85 zone is good enough. Uh, he was worth the draft pick. That's all I can really say. Van Buren, the cheapest of all the re-signings, which makes no sense because he's the only guy that's superstar at the linebacker spot. Amazing block shed, pretty good zone coverage, unbelievably athletic, and really good tackle. Quay Walker, 89 overall. It's hit or miss whether you're going to see him an X-Factor or star, but you're always going to see him as a pretty good overall I've seen better Quays, though. I've seen better Quay builds. Cooper, 89 overall. He really developed pretty nicely, though. Uh, good block shed, good zone coverage, really fast. Great tackle, pursuit, all that good stuff. And you basically got yourself another Quay like we talked about. This linebacking group is really good, though. Jair Alexander, he's 31 now, but he's still really good. Press is amazing. Man and zone are great. Play rack speed, all that stuff is great. Then we move on to Stokes, who ended up as an 85 overall. That's not a bad partner in crime. Really good press man. You know, if you run press man like, uh, you know, Jeff Halfley is going to be running, that's, you know, kind of the way you wanted those guys build. Sergio Sharp, you know, not the fastest guy. No block shed, but really good power move. Unfortunately, just never really did anything on the field. He had one season where he had like seven sacks, I think. Rashawn Gary got the two, three-year deal, one of the two, whatever it is. You know, had double-digit sacks pretty much every single season. He was the only guy doing anything on this line. Andrews is pretty much gone to this rate. Can, really good block shed, no power move. It's the way a lot of the guys are at defensive tackle. Andrews, though, I guess we'll take a look at, you know, kind of the same situation there. And then we'll take a look at the cornerback number three. I also want to look at Hutton. You know, some of you guys really like the... Uh, the special teamers, and he was actually one of our best, like, drafted kickers we've ever had. 76 overall only, 27 years old, but 98 kick power and 85 accuracy. But looking at the years, I mean, perfect year one, missed three in year two, perfect in year three, and missed two in year four. I mean, we've had established 85-plus kickers missing more than that, so that guy was kind of special. One of the more special players we drafted in this rebuild, but... Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this win of a rebuild, but kind of a fail rebuild because we didn't win a Super Bowl, let me know by leaving a like, subscribing if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate and continued support on the channel. Maybe follow me on Twitter, John Picare, second channel Picare Plays for non-matic content, which I actually uploaded a video yes or not yesterday, earlier today. So maybe check that out. And if you have a suggestion for a team you want to see next, maybe a challenge rebuild idea, anything at all, let me know in the comment section below. And that is about it. Probably be back with the playoffs for Bisons on Monday, tomorrow, I suppose. Was it, you Normally, I leave it a day for rebuild, so maybe on Tuesday. But Monday or Tuesday, one of the two. So uh, be on the lookout. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!